The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life. I'm Ken Coleman, and I'm joined by my colleague, Anthony O'Neill. We are Ramsey personalities, and we host shows on the Ramsey Network as well. But we are with you and for you this hour. 888 825 225 is the number to jump in, and uh, we're going to talk about money, which of course you've come to know and expect that here on The Ramsey Show. Uh, we'll talk about uh, your relationships, young people, and, and we'll talk about your work, working on purpose. Both Anthony and I have made steps, and, and as part of our journey here to Ramsey Solutions, stepping out in faith, on purpose, to do what we were born to do. And so we'll help you on anything that you need. We always have a great time together. How are you, sir? Hey, man, I'm doing well, man. You ready to roll? Hey, let's do it. All right, 888-825-5225. Uh, let's go to Armin, uh, who joins us in Los Angeles. How can we help? Hey, guys, how are you doing? Oh, we're living the dream. What's going on? <laughs> All right, so before I ask my question, I just wanted to give some context. So I'm currently 17 years old, and um, I want to pursue a career of becoming a corporate lawyer. Um, I'm about to finish my last semester at a community college, and I have saved up about $7,000. And so the university that I'm transferring to is uh, UCLA. And although it's great and all, I am, however, faced with a pretty big dilemma. And so I live 30 miles away from UCLA, so I'm contemplating on if I should buy a car with the money I have saved up or if I should choose to live there in a dorm or an apartment, which will be a big financial investment. And so the the, the benefit of what I'm thinking of commuting is I'll, I'll be able to keep my, my part-time job at, at a law firm. And the good thing about that is because I want to become a corporate lawyer, the, the experience that I gained from there is crucial. And so I've also spoken with various attorneys at my workplace who have gone to UCLA and counselors and professors and they've all said the same thing and keep in mind I've, I've spoke to these people who have also been to UCLA and all these people have said that oh well it's a one time one once in a lifetime uh, experience and that essentially I have to I have to live there to get that experience and that it's a very crucial part of of my development as a human being because you get to socialize with these intellectual colleagues so uh, I'm, I'm just torn. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Armin, let me ask you this, and my colleague's ready to go. He's he's ready. Um, how much ex- more expensive will it be? You told us it's a good bit more expensive. I want to know how much, and then do you even have the ability to do that, despite all these wonderful lawyers telling you it's a wonderful thing to do? Uh, so they're saying, well, um, obviously I'm going to have to incorporate some student loan debt with that, and uh, – UCLA has given me a grant of 15000 which covers my tuition. But the, 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 the side effect of that is uh, it's another 15000 which they've given me. Um, yeah. So you can't afford it. To get, you can't afford it. Uh, basically, yeah. 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 Hey, yo. yeah, man. You know, Armand, I, I want to be respectful because you sound like a very young, bright man. And, and it sounds like you're confused because you are being misled. Uh, by people around you. Oh my God, it's just an experience. Well, I want you to really think about this. Your experience is going to cost you about forty-five to fifty thousand dollars in debt, and then you're going to have another journey of an experience for twenty years after that to pay it off. What kind of experience is that crap? Okay, and so yeah. for me, you know, now nah, hold on, hold on, bro. I, I got you. <laughs> I want to, I, I want to help you, and I want you to go to UCLA. I'm from Oceanside, California, so I hear you on UCLA. I think it's a great opportunity. I want to be honest with you, uh, but the experience of racking up debt is an experience that you're not going to be a part of. I have no problem saying that. Um, now, talk to me about this seven thousand dollars in the commute. Uh, uh, so this. Yeah, so the seven thousand dollars in commute, I uh, from from my part time job at the law firm, I incorporated about seven thousand dollars. Cool. And so, are you living at home right now? 
Yeah, with my parents. What kind of car do you have right now? I, I don't have a car. Okay. All right, cool. So let me get this straight. If you spend $7,000 and go buy a quality car, you can stay at home, keep your part-time job that generates income for you that also could possibly set you up for a full-time job later on once you graduate and pass the bar exam and stuff like that with the law firm. You're building relationships, and you can go to school debt-free because you're getting your tuition covered from the $15,000. Is that story correct? Yes or no? Yes, that's correct. Then, young man, that's an experience that you need to be going for. Yeah. Because not only are you getting a paycheck, young man, you're getting a paycheck, but then Ken talks about this in his book, The Proximity Principle. You are already in proximity of lawyers. Yeah. And you never know what they can do to help you through. That's a that Ken, now that's what I want. I'd rather be around the proximity of my future yes. than the proximity of debt. What the yeah. heck? And let me just add to that. Uh, let me give you a different experience that uh, you may not have a vision for. All these lawyers, see, they're not thinking about your financial future. Mm -hmm. They're just telling you about all of their memories. And they did it the way everybody else does it. But, uh, Armin, listen to me. When you stay with your mom and dad and you get that $7,000 car, whatever you're going to buy, 5000 whatever, and you keep going, you don't accrue debt, and you get out of UCLA, mm. and you're now working for that law firm or another law firm because you're way ahead of the game, as Anthony said, guess what? You can have all kinds of experiences where you travel around the globe with that fat lawyer salary Man. that has no debt. I'm you're sipping from coconuts oh, anywhere you want to go, yes, brother. Lord. So I got to tell you something. Uh -huh. UCLA is pretty cool. I've seen the campus, AO. That's your neck of the woods. Yeah. It's a gorgeous experience. Beautiful. But I got to tell you something. It's not that great. Mm -mm. It's not as great as the vacations you're going to be able to take, the house you're going to be able to afford, because you have no debt and because you're a rocking lawyer. So, A.O. Uh, you know, and if he was on my show, uh, what, Ken, would you, what would you do? I would add this in there. You know, James may, you know, fire me on the next segment. I'll take it. Oh, boy. It. Please don't do that, because I know, really want to do the show with you. I, I do, too. Okay. But when you're young. When you're debt free, yeah. when you're a lawyer making that kind of money, yeah. you talking about sipping coconut? You sipping coconuts with a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful woman next oh, to you. Oh, I should have known you the see single guy was going there. <laughs> right, right, yeah. There's a lot of great, <laughs> there's a lot of great experiences in his future. Yes, there uh, is. If he decides oh. to stay at home yeah. and drive that car, paid for a car, by the way. Oh, brother, uh, that's a different caliber of woman, right there, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. But uh, the advice still is the same. And, uh, you know, here, here's the thing. The, here's, here's what the, uh, the learning, um, here's what the lesson is from this call. There are some well-meaning people mm -hmm. who are very successful, who will give young people bad advice. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, it's a great experience. Go, go take out a loan. You got to live on campus, man. You got to be a part of the party scene at UCLA. Trust me, you're never going to forget that. And these are well meaning people, but it's just awful advice. Awful, awful, awful advice. Ugh. Oh, but that's why we're here, AO. Yes, sir. All right, listen. AO's warmed up, as you can tell. We're ready to go. It's a free call. 888 825 5225. Dial it right now. We're here for you. Don't move. More of the Ramsey Show right around the corner. Stop paying your overpriced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The Irish family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. The Ramsey Show continues from our Ramsey Solutions World Headquarters. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague Anthony O'Neill as we take your calls this hour, 888-825-5225. You got your money questions? AO's ready to go. 
How about questions about that bigger shovel, making more money, making more impact, income and impact? That's what I focus on on the Ken Coleman Show as a part of the Ramsey Network. My colleague, Anthony O'Neill, uh, new podcast, The Table with Anthony O'Neill. It's been a big hit on YouTube. Now he's bringing it to you in podcast form as well. So search The Table with Anthony O'Neill on YouTube as well as anywhere podcasts are available. You can check out the Ken Coleman Show again, YouTube as well, anywhere podcasts are available, Sirius XM, and your local talk radio station. So let's get to it, 888-825-5225, 5225 Let's go to Sacramento, California, where Jack joins us. Jack, how can we help? Hey, guys, how are you guys doing? We're living the dream. What are you doing? I'm doing all right. So I'm a, first off, first off, I just want to say thank you guys so much for the work you guys do. I listen, I listen to you every day. I love it. So thank you for the work you do. Thank you, sir. So I'm going to give a little context before I ask my question. So my wife and I make about $81,000 total uh, household income, uh, but she actually got a promotion and she's going to go up to, we're going to go up to about $96,000 uh, next month. Uh, however, I work in the nonprofit world, and I've been in the nonprofit world ever since I graduated college about seven years ago. And I would like to continue to keep working in the health and human services field. However, I'm looking for a new job, and one of the things I'm struggling with is that uh, I would like to increase my income and increase my shovel, but I need a little help knowing how to do that. I've been looking for jobs, and a lot of it is. Uh, needs some sort of like master's degree or they get paid about the same amount as I do. I'm looking to stay in the area that I'm at. And so I just kind of need some guidance on that. Okay. Well, so we wouldn't want to pursue any kind of higher education like a master's if it's going to pay you the same amount of money. And and so if you're, it depends on what you're looking to advance to. So in this health and human services nonprofit world, am I hearing that? That's the combination? Yeah, and so I've worked in a variety of settings with uh, kids in foster care, uh, health insurance now. Okay. So I do a variety of things, but I want to I primarily work with youth or helping kids, uh, mentor kids, like those kinds of things. That's, that's what I'm really passionate about. Okay. Um, so, there, so I'm looking so, at some... So let's focus on that. That's where we look first. See, we, we don't... We must focus on the work that we want to do, and then we figure out the income situation. It, it, it doesn't flip, okay? Because I can tell you, I get calls every day, AO, on the Ken Coleman Show, where people just took a promotion six months ago, a year ago. They took it for money, mm. and they're miserable. And, and again, there's all kinds of data out there. You know, uh, two-thirds of people would rather take a pay cut to do meaningful work. Are you kidding me? So this is real. So, Jack, because you very, very clear, you want to help young people, underserved young people. You know those people, and you know – that you, you know the people you want to serve and you know where they are. You know who's serving them. True or false? That's true. A lot of the places uh, sometimes pay less than I do, so I'm, I'm looking at jobs like at the state level okay. as well. So now you've done the work. You've really answered your own question. You must first focus on who is it that you want to serve, and you know who they are, and you know who's serving them, and so you are going to be somewhat limited is to your options based on the finances. Now you said you guys are going to be combined 96,000. What's your cut of that? Once your wife gets that promotion, what's your cut? So I make about 50,000. Okay. So if you're looking at working for the state and serving young people that are, uh, you know, underserved or whatever that situation looks like, whether that's in the foster care, uh, or in maybe welfare type programs, whatever that is, you know what that is. Are there positions, if you get in and then eventually move up, that will allow you to make 50 or more? Yes, there have been some. I, I, I had, Like I said, I've, I've looked at the state level, but I also wouldn't mind staying at the nonprofit level. I think the, the problem I run into is sometimes the culture hasn't been great or there's been good pay but not good culture or vice versa. Right. So here's the deal. This is called, I got to go out and I got to look, I got to examine, I got to talk to people and we don't judge any future opportunities on what we faced in the past. You know, AO, you know, you, you can't get discouraged when you go, okay, I found something uh, that looks pretty good, but well, uh, you know, uh, the income's good, culture's not good. Well, I just don't think I'm going to find it. And the question here that Jack's asking is how do I do it? I wish I had some super deep answer, but it doesn't <laughs> exist. The simple way of how is I keep turning over rocks. Here's the example I use. Yeah. Uh, 
I have been walking along with my wife at times, and uh, the women out there in the lobby will know what I'm talking about. So will the dudes. And all of a sudden, the back of her earring falls off or something, and the earring just falls down. You know, it's kind of like, what's going on? And when it falls down, what do we do? And we just immediately look down and we go, where'd it go? And we, we know it fell down and we stop, we pause, we go, I'm in this area. I know it fell in this area. It has to be in this area. True or false? It has to be there. I, I, I so what do we do? I don't know. I, don't I know, know you don't know this because <laughs> you don't do many moonlight walks on the beach. Uh, but anyway, the point is, is that this is the same thing. Jack knows the area he wants to be in. True, true, true. So the opportunities, he knows the area, so the opportunities... They're there in this area, so what do I do? Just like we're looking for that back of earring or whatever, uh, turning over rocks if we're in a rocky path or we're on out there, we're just looking. We're just turning over. We're looking at everything, examining. I mean, we're down on our hands and knees looking for the back of that earring, and I think that's that's the thing here. This is intensity. Hmm. This is absolute intensity and intentionality to look for what I'm looking for, and here's the reality. You're going to be limited at times. Hmm. But uh, if you're limited to 50000 you're limited to 50000 Here's what we know about teachers. Uh, the median salary across this nation for teachers is about $60,000. That's the median. But we also know from our largest millionaire study ever that Ramsey Solutions did that the third largest group of everyday millionaires, net worth millionaires, were teachers. So don't tell me you can't make enough money, the income you need, and the impact you want. 844, excuse me, that's the wrong number. That's my number, 888-825-5225. You ever done that? Say uh, the wrong phone number? No, nah, because I, I don't have a phone number. You don't have a phone number on the table? No, can I get one, Jeff? Because you're guest only? <laughs> you don't, so you don't take Do call millennials even them? use the phone anymore? Does besides anybody, wow. the, so Dave, Dave yes. uses the phone. We use the phone on the Ken Coleman we show. We text. John Deloney does. Yeah, I said besides texting. Oh, yes. besides texting. Yeah. Yes. John yeah. Deloney is not a millennial. Yeah, that's true. We, John and I are in our 40s. I'll just play it. All right. I get uh, it. I get, I get it. it. But you know, a serious question. Um, I hear that often like on, on uh, within the millennials. You know, man, well, the pay is good, but the culture is whack. Or the culture is so good, but the pay is whack. So, and, and they always say, I'm looking for good pay, good culture, good people. Yeah. And in your expertise, because I'm not the expert in this field, can you find all three of those? Sure you can. So do you advise people to only go to where you find all three of those? Well, I try to tell you to try to get there. Now, there may be a season where if you're on your career ladder and you go, all right, here's the deal. This is this is giving me the pay and the experience that I need. Mm -hmm. It's not a great culture, but if I know I'm not there long term, I can bite my lip. I can be a big boy, put on my big boy pants, okay. and I can put up with it. You know, as long as it's not an abusive situation. Okay. But we talk about this all the time. You can be in the right role. I'm glad you bring this up. You can be in the right role. What you were designed to do. I call it the sweet spot, where you use your talent to perform your passion to accomplish your mission. Okay. Yeah. But in an awful culture. You could be in your dream job, and after about six weeks of walking into that awful culture, mm. you can go, oh, I can't do this anymore. Mm. So that's doing the right thing in the wrong place. And what you want to do is you want to be in the right role in the right place. In other words, the right seat on the right bus. So good. And that's what you got to go for. And by the way, that is possible. Now, I'm glad you brought this up, AO, because you, you've been in the church world. You've worked for some big-time churches Absolutely. where there are great positions, but maybe the culture, you Horrible. know, whatever the situation is. But here's the deal. It may take a little longer to find that, mm -hmm. but it is always worth it. Yes. Absolutely always worth it. Uh, hey, we just mentioned the table. So uh, tell people why they need to listen to the show I before mean, we head to break. We are having an intentional conversation about how to get out of debt, how to build wealth, how to have how to house, how to have successful relationships. So uh, come on over there. I challenged Will Smith recently. You did? Oh, yeah, on a workout challenge. I just posted it on my IG. Go check on it out. On his world. dad bod thing? You went yes. after him? Oh, I went after him. I really hope he responds. I hope that he That would too. make my life to see you and he uh, working out together. Oh, it's going to go good. All right, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Hey, let me tell you what else is going to happen. We're coming right back. Don't move. This is The Ramsey Show.
Hey folks, I got a great option to help you pay for your education. The Army National Guard. The Army National Guard believes you are the next greatest generation because you have proven that even in adversity, that you have what it takes to succeed. That's why they offer benefits like tuition assistance, career training, and a paycheck to help you avoid debt. No matter what your goals are, the Army National Guard can help you get there. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. the Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague Anthony O'Neill, and we are here taking your questions, 888-825-5225, questions about money, questions about your work. Hey, do you want to enjoy going to work? You want to make more income? Uh, hey, you got some you got some uh, relationship and single questions? Oh, AO's here. He's the He's our designated uh, you know, you don't. You didn't set out to be this, but because you are the only Ramsey personality right now that happens to be single, uh, and I know you love when I share that information out there. I mean, you know, listen. you kind of got the edge on that. You talk about it on the table. I mean, listen. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being single. No, who said there was? Right. So I, I got to take all those questions to you. Oh, thank you. So any of those questions? Hey, I'm in a relationship. Yeah. Uh, we're not married. No. Nope. Uh, we're not seeing eye to eye. Ao is on duty. Hey, man, listen. And I sit here and I watch and I go, I'm the old married guy, and I just let him roll. Yeah, man. So we'll take those questions too. Absolutely. You take the married questions, and I'll take the single questions. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not the relationship expert, but I can give you some advice from well, from things I've learned during my yes, life. Yes, you can. You can take money and relationships on from that unique perspective. Yes. I've been married so long, I just say, yes, dear. Do you know what I mean? See? We just hit 23 years. That's I a joke. Never, I would never see, become a yes man. Oh, he says that. And all the married dudes out in the lobby like, okay, we'll see how that, we'll see how that, look <laughs> well, at this guy in the front row. Right like, there in the uh, front row, man. He was like, I don't know, yeah, man. Look at it right there. Look at oh, it right, man, right there. Man. There we go. Look you at know. the man in the red shirt. By the way, congratulations. Just finished his PhD. He did, man. I love that. That's an educated man. brother. I that, love that, that's that. a yes man. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Hey, uh, you need to find out for yourself why blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. You get free samples, free shipping, and with the new promos they run every month you'll save even more use the promo code ramsey to get the best deal today's question ao comes from Callista in nebraska she says i'm a dental hygienist but i'm considering getting a bachelor's degree in something that would be more fulfilling and give me more opportunities i'd love to be a teacher but the pay is not the best i've also considered nursing school because of the potential income but i wonder if i would end up feeling unfulfilled again do I choose my career based on finances or adjust my finances for the career? The answer is and always will be, if you ask me, B. You must always choose what you were created to do, and you adjust your lifestyle to that. I mentioned this earlier. Teachers who across the nation, the median income is $60,000. They are the third largest group of everyday millionaires, which means they live on less than they make. They are very fulfilled. In other words, they've got plenty of income because they're working for impact. And I say this on the Ken Coleman Show every day when I start the show. You were created to contribute. You were created to work. You don't work to live. You live to work. And that doesn't mean becoming a workaholic and putting all your value in your paycheck. What it means is you were created to contribute. That's why everybody that I talked to on the show, AO, who calls in and they're very confused. Ken, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I just want to help people. Everybody yeah. says that because we all long to make a difference. So hey. the answer is figure out what you're supposed to do. You can call my show. We'll do a deep dive with you. Uh, once you figure it out, you adjust your lifestyle to that. You know what, Ken? I want to ask something to that. All it's right. not really necessary to the question, but to the point you just made. Mm -hmm. And I really want America to hear this out. How is it that teachers who are making, on average, median income, uh, making $60,000 a year, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but then they are retiring millionaires. Yeah. I, 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 I want to teach right here from the money principle. Yes. Do it. You say live below your means. That's how they're doing it. They're living below their means. They're yeah. paying off their debt. And then also in that same study that we did, we found out that they're also paying off their mortgage. Yes. Watch this. 
uh, when they retire, if they have one million dollars in their retirement funds and then they let's say they just draw the interest only. Don't pull from the one million. Let's just say the interest is 10 percent at that time. It's a hundred thousand dollars. So I know America are probably probably saying, where are you going to get 10 percent from that? Da, da, da. Well, I can talk to that, too. But let's just go down to the low end. Let's say it's eight percent. That's eighty thousand dollars. So when she retires, she's debt free, mm -hmm. has a million dollars in her account and she gets a twenty thousand dollar pay raise. Yeah. That's right. To go retire. Why? Because over a period of time, mm -hmm. she didn't chase money. She chased happiness. Yeah. And while she was chasing her happiness, her fulfillment, like you taught, uh, she's living the money principles that, that we teach. Yes. Live below your means. You know, have the nice things. Pay off your debt. Stay away from debt. And so when she retires, not only does she has seven figures that she could pass down to her kids and to her kids' kids, but she gets a $20,000 when she stops working and she can now go enjoy life. Come I just had to add that Come in on. there. It's great. For and all y'all people saying, yeah. oh, you got to make a million dollars a year. No, you don't. No. And not only did he make the financial case, let me make the soul case. So. Not only has she had a raise in retirement, she's going to get to the end of her journey, look back and reminisce, <sighs> not regret. So good. And that's what this journey is all about. I love it. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. Samir joins us in St. Louis, Missouri. Samir, how can we help? Yes, it's a pleasure to talk to you, gentlemen. Uh, so, so quickly, I started. I, I found Ray, uh, Dave about four years ago, and I paid off like two hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt. Uh, Whoa! I'm, I'm Way to go, free. Samir. That's serious stuff. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I'm debt free. I just paid off my house. I paid off one hundred four thousand on the twelve. Wow! And I am looking to buy another house, okay. but I need to do something called a bridge loan. Uh, which is, I think, some kind of temporary loan because I don't have 20% uh, to put down on a new house, so I have to wait to sell my house, or you know, in order to put that money down no. towards the new house no. or get this. No, no, because AKA is also called a caveat loan. All right, and so those okay. typically go from like two weeks to about three years. And what I want you to do is. Um, I want you to go ahead and sell your current loan. I mean, not your loan. Sell your current house. Uh, you are okay. already debt free. You have already made the right moves. I do not want you to go back because here's the thing. If you get this loan, let's say life happens within the next year. Now you're stuck with that and you do not and you will not qualify for the next loan. So what I want you to do, man, is just be patient. Sell this house in this market. You can sell that house fast. Um, and then take that income from the home and go on over and purchase your new home. Yeah. I had to do that. Ken had to do that. Um, so, I mean, trust me, don't Samir, do temporary loans. What does your house yeah. worth? Uh, I'm thinking it will sell for like uh, 230 I've lived in it uh, 11 years now, and I paid 130 whenever I bought it. Yeah, you're in St. Louis. The market's white hot pretty much everywhere. And so you sell that for two thirty, like AO said. What's the new house going to cost you? Uh, four ten. So okay. twenty per. So you got more than you got plenty. Plenty. You basically got half. Yeah. Fifty percent down. You don't uh, even have to do that per se. But I mean, why are you in an itch to uh, not wait on the home? Can you not do a contingency where you put an offer down on building or whatever, and it's based on the con contingency of you selling your home? No, because there's no there's no houses in the area where I'm looking at, uh, and nobody wants to wait. I tried doing that, and they don't. They're not willing okay. to wait. Okay, I get um, you. That's fine. But AO yeah. is still right. I yeah. mean, you just you're just gonna have to be patient, and that's hard. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I agree. Yeah, be patient. Yeah, you got this. You know, I mean, <laughs> this is such a crazy real estate market that it's it's got people kind of going, hey. I mean, but here's here's the point. You know, I, houses are still gonna be there. Absolutely. It's, you know, at some point, he has done such a tremendous job. He's in an enviable position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and if they're not there, he can f wait and go build one. Right. You know, he's going to have $100,000 in equity. Sounds like he makes good money. I mean, here's the thing. Patience is worth it in the long run. You do not want to make a hasty decision based upon emotions. Uh, just sit still, be tight, and you'll be all right. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree on that. All right, AO, question from Deshaun on Facebook. I'm in. I'm a sophomore in college. I'm currently debt-free. My college is paid for by scholarships. I've got $1,500 in savings. I'm 21. How can I make sure not to get in debt? How do I maximize my money from my job?
job. I mean, if you're graduating debt free, I'll go ahead and just part that money into a savings account, get the thing up to three months at her age level. Uh, and then that's how you stay out of debt. I mean, if you get a fully funded emergency fund, if an emergency happens, you don't have to go back into debt to cover that emergency. But I want to give her some, some cool points here, brother, before we go to break. Do you know that nearly 52% of the people in America don't even have $1,000 in their savings? Yeah. She's already about 21 year old. No debt, scholarship, going to be in great shape. Great advice, AO. All right, don't move. He is Anthony O'Neill. I'm Ken Coleman. This is The Ramsey Show. We'll be right back. Ramsey Show continues. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by Anthony O'Neill, and we're taking your questions about your life. How about those money questions? Getting out of debt, savings, investing. What do you got? Hey, how about work? Oh, man, I'm in a dead-end job. Or my job's okay, but I want to I want to move into something else. I want to get promoted. I actually want, I like the work. I just want to get promoted. I'm moving into a leadership position. Hey, how do I do that? Any of those work questions, career and, and working on purpose questions, well, that's what I will work with you on as well. Anthony O'Neill taking your calls with me, Ken Coleman, and we are Ramsey Personalities. Check out our shows on the Ramsey Network, The Table with Anthony O'Neill, uh, available on YouTube and as a podcast, and then The Ken Coleman Show on YouTube, podcast, talk radio, and Sirius XM. All right, to the phones we go. Carbondale, Illinois is where Austin joins us. Austin, how can we help? Hi, gentlemen. Thanks for speaking with me. Sure. Um, I'm a relatively new supervisor, uh, less than a year in for a federal agency, and I have a small uh, group of employees that work for me, about four of them, and they are absolutely awesome. And being uh, within the federal agency, I have limited control over what kind of financial um, incentives I can offer them. And I was wondering if you had any advice or recommendations on ways that I can show my appreciation, show my gratitude that without it becoming, you know, just the repetitive, good job, nice work. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, um, recognition and rewards. Okay. Recognition and rewards. And I know you say y'all want to do a little bit more than just good job, but recognition is something you do in front of everybody. You got a small team and uh, I would combine those two words and uh, you can do this out of pocket, even if you're limited uh, with the federal agency not giving you a budget for this, because this isn't about money. But you could do something fun, like uh, the person's favorite dessert or their favorite uh, restaurant. You can get a gift card, call the whole group together, there's only four of them, and go, hey, Sue, Sally, John, Jerry, whoever it is, they've been doing a great job, and I wanted to publicly recognize them. See, that's the recognition piece, and you brag about them publicly, then you give them some type of a reward. And again, both the recognition and the reward, it's not about how fancy it is or how shiny it is or how expensive it is. It's just the fact that you're doing it and you're showing them some love. So it could be that simple. Uh, And that's something that you can do, whether you have a budget for it or not. Make sense? Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate the call. Uh, You know, we know this, by the way. HR data, folks, shows that people would rather be publicly recognized and received some type of reward, which is the attaboy, girl, and then, hey, good job. I'm going to give you an extra day off, mm. you know, or, hey, if I'm going to reward and recognize my colleague, AO, okay, let's say I was leading AO. Mm-hmm. All right, here's what I know, okay? He likes the fine experiences, mm-hmm. so I may pick his favorite restaurant. I may pick his favorite dessert. I may... Uh, hook him up with a gift card or buy a round of golf for him at a really sweet golf course. I may buy him a golf club. I may buy him some golf shoes. All of those things are personal to you, but it's really about recognizing you. It's not even the gift, which is the reward. Yeah, I would love to join a Ken Coleman team. You you need me to do that? I can just do that because, you know, I can just do that. Listen, man. All right. Round of golf, I'll do it for one (laughs) thing. (laughs) So, again, we know that from HR studies that people would rather receive those things than a raise. Yeah. 
So let's not overthink this, leaders. Just publicly recognize them and put a little reward with it, and it goes a really long way. Let's go now to Chattanooga, Tennessee, where Mary joins us. Mary, how can we help? Well, I'm just kind of on what you were talking about there, trying to find ways to encourage myself and others on this journey because it's kind of uh, budget tight right now. Yeah, tell me. What, 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 are you cha- what are you challenged by? What are you trying to do? Well, I've been pulling my credit report, and I've got, so far I have discovered over about 24000 in debt. Okay. And I think each time I read through that and look through that and try to pull that out and try to deal with these creditors, it's been really, really hard. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, well, talk to us. I mean, what, what's 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 so difficult about it? Twenty four thousand dollars in debt. Okay, cool. I, I hear you. Uh, what are you making it a month? I mean, not a month. Uh, what's your annual income? About nine thousand. Say it again. About nine grand. You make nine thousand dollars a year. Yeah, I'm on a fixed income disability. Oh, okay, so now that's why it's it's discouraging. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Because I mean, you don't have any income, so I'm gonna let the career expert help you out. Yeah. Because we gotta get our, we gotta get our shovel up. Yeah. I mean, I can give you all the motivational tools, uh, but it's still gonna be discouraging if we don't have an income. Camp. Yeah, Mary, uh, break down your fixed income situation. Obviously, I understand you're on a disability, and but what what would it take? I mean, what are where are you limited? As much as you're comfortable sharing, I need to understand the disability, and then then we deal with that fixed income. Um, I get less than a thousand a month. Um, most of it goes to rent, more than half. No, I understand, but what is your disability? What's right. what's limiting you? Um, there's some back issues. Okay, and and where are you? Are you seeing somebody? Is there is there a light at the end of the tunnel? What's the prognosis on the back? Right. Well, that's the problem I'm running into. Is I have no insurance and no other source of income, uh, and I'm getting bills from from creditors, contingencies for medical bills that I can't afford, and I realize I'm responsible for them, which I thought is a new realization for me. Okay. Then it's all new to me, but how to deal with that? I'm getting a lot of shutoffs and shutdowns with the collection issues, and how to even address any of this or how to proceed with any of this. Okay, so you're and not. It's becoming quite overwhelming. I get it. Okay, so you're you're mm-hmm. not even uh, getting treatment on the back. So the next question is, what work could you do today, even if it hurt? What could you do? Uh, I'm at the. I don't know. No, um, that's not true. It, that's not true. I've well, heard that so many times, Mary. Come on now. Come on, Mary. Mary. Well, I, I enjoy clerical work. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy doing research. Um, it's just a matter of having the tools that I would need to do that. It then causes mon- costs money. What, wait, 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 wait. When you say clerical work, what do you mean? You mean like administrative assistant type work where you're doing uh, lots of administrative tasks? Is that what you mean? Basically, yeah. Kind of, uh, yeah. I guess that would be the case. Yeah, something that I would be, um, that kind you, of a hands-on thing I would be doing. Have you done that before for anybody? I've done it a few times as volunteering for nonprofits. Yeah. No, let me, Mary. So here's here's the thing. So Ao, I, I want you to take over in just a second on what we can do for her. You know, as far as the coaching, or we can get her some counseling, mm-hmm. the financial stuff. But Mary, I'm gonna tell you something. Ao's right. Twenty four thousand dollars. While it seems like a massive mountain for you to climb, I'm telling you, it's not. It is on a fixed income. Yes. And you're just, you're not even, you're just, you're just, you're trying not to drown every month. But I'm going to tell you something, Mary. It doesn't sound like to me, and I'm not in any way minimizing your pain, but it does not sound like to me like you are in so much pain that you can't go work. And I'm telling you, the way out of this, the financial pain and the physical pain, is work. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. The economy in Tennessee is really good. Chattanooga is a thriving economic center. You need to go get a job. And if you're doing uh, basic administrative work or you're working in a a warehouse answering phones, you can be doing way more than $9,000 a year. That fixed income is holding you back. You need to drop the fixed income. You need to go, hey, I'm in pain, but I'm going to work. And when I go to work, I'm going to go get a job where I can get some benefits and I'm going to move into that. And then I'll start taking care of myself physically. You can get on the phone with the creditors and go, here's my situation. I'll get to you when I get to you. But 24000 is doable. And I want you to hang on the line. Madison, let's get her... Um, let's get her plugged into Ramsey Plus. Let's also maybe if we can get a, a, on her on the phone with one of our counselors and coaches and, for a session to kind of show her step by step what she needs to do. Ayo. And one of the and, and here's the thing, um, um, Samantha, you're going to get counseling inside of Ramsey Plus. So please stay on the line. Let Madison take care of that. Uh, but I want to encourage you uh, because what I what I heard was excuses. I didn't hear 
um, um, I didn't hear anything that says I cannot work. So I want to be sensitive to your pain. I want to be sensitive to your situation. But here's the truth in a respectful way that the greatest enemy to your success is your excuse. If you want to change things around, then you have to change your mindset. That's the very first thing. So I agree with Ken. You got to get out there and get a job. You got to get out there and look online and see what you could do maybe from home. You can do something while you're also getting your back looked at and situated. So uh, stay on the line. We'll get you situated. And again, respectfully, um, we're praying for you and your pain. Yeah. Yeah. Tough stuff. Uh, but there is hope. And that is very surmountable. You can get over that. All right. Hey, I want to thank our producer, James Childs, and uh, sitting in for Kelly Daniels today, Madison Browder. AO, thank you, my friend. Always a joy to be with you. But we want to thank you, America. Thank you for listening. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, guys, this is James, senior producer for The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? And a lot of those people listen on one of our 600 plus radio stations across the country. To find a station near you, head to theramseyshow.com. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show, and it's where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life, your money, your work, your relationships, and beyond. I'm Ken Coleman, and I'm joined by my colleague, Anthony O'Neill. We're Ramsey personalities, both have shows as a part of the Ramsey Network, and we are here for you this hour. 888-825-5225 is the phone number. 888-825-5225. Let's go to Boston, Massachusetts to get us started this hour. Samantha is there. Samantha, how can we help? Hi. Thanks very much for taking my call. You bet. Um, so I am a professional pastry chef, and I work outside of the home in my industry, and that's all fine and good. Um, on the side, I sometimes make custom cakes for people, mostly people who come to me and ask me to do something. I'm not really big on promoting and trying to sell myself because I'm busy enough with my actual job job. Um, but friends, friends of friends, acquaintances, people who've been at parties that have had my cakes sometimes come to me and want cakes and things like that. And we're talking like the kind of cakes you would see on television, like a custom sculpted car, yeah. things that the going rate is like $350. Like that's the legit rate that I can, that's what the market will bear. That's what I, you know, can reasonably charge. And they take me a really long time. So that's what I do charge. And that's no problem when it's a fairly affluent client. I don't really have too much. I, I personally wouldn't pay that much for a cake ever, but that's what I do. So <laughs> that's what I charge. Um, Sometimes, though, it's a friend or a friend of a friend who I know is broke and I know cannot afford that. And it's definitely a want, not a need. It's beyond their means. They're not someone who's in a position that they should be spending $300 on a cake. But it happens often enough that I just don't know what to do when, when someone comes to me and they show me something really elaborate and it's got to feed 50 people and they're excited because they know someone who can do, you know, has the skill set and can do something in their circle. So they want to give me work and they want to show off like, Hey, I can, you know, I know someone who can do this and look what I brought to the party. It's amazing. But I feel sick to my stomach when I know I've been to their house. I've spent time with them socially. I know how they live. And I know this is not something that they can reasonably afford to spend on a cake. And so I end up either under quoting dramatically or, you know, trying to get out of doing it. And I'm, I'm just at a loss of how to handle that because it seems to be happening more and more. And like I said, if this was just strictly, I was running a business and I needed to just buck up and say, okay, this is, this is, I have to charge and this is what I have to do. I have to find a way to price reasonably. I think I'd be okay with it, but it's this you know, it's this weird gray area where they're like, they're sort of friends, but more importantly than that, even the friends I can charge, what my time is worth, but it's the, it's the fact that I personally know them and I know that this is not something that they should be spending that much money on based on their situation in life. Right. 
Well, Any thoughts? Yeah, I do. I have a couple quick thoughts. First of all, you are absolutely a sweetheart uh, of a person. I mean, <laughs> you're, you're, I mean, your your heart is all. It's just kind of just kind of overflowing out of the phone, and I think that you have to relax. So I think there's two responses. Um, you don't feel good when you make a cake for less than $350. You've made that very clear. It doesn't feel good to you because it takes a lot of time. You already got a full-time job. So so I wouldn't make the cake unless you feel good about making the cake. And you don't feel good about making the cake if it's less than $350. So what you're doing is because you you are smart with your money and you probably listened to the Rams show for a long time and you and you know too much and you're going they can't afford that and you're you're placing their reality uh, on your shoulders. And I don't think that's your burden to bear. So you can say pass in those situations where you know somebody can't afford it, or in your words, it's not a good use of their money, but you're not their financial counselor. You're somebody who makes a really nice cake and they want a really nice cake. And you know, I've had I've been on the show with Dave before, Samantha, where someone will call in, they work for a bank. And they're trying to get out of debt. And they're like, Dave, I, I work for a bank that gives out loans. And he's like, no, you're not a criminal. You're not doing anything unethical. It's your job. I right. get it that it's a disconnect in values, but it doesn't make you a bad person for making a cake for somebody who may not be spending their money wisely. But in that situation, Samantha, instead of letting it eat you alive, just say, I can't do that right now. Sorry, I'd okay. like to. I can't do it. That's one option. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and, and then and then you need to also get back to the point where you go, I'm only going to make cakes for this. It is what it is. So so it, it, you can't do a financial dossier on everybody who buys a cake from you. It's going to drive you crazy. <laughs> right. So right. if you know too much, and it's not too much, but I know what you're saying, and you don't feel good about it, go, hey, I can't do that right now. I got a full-time gig, and I can only do so many cakes. I'm so sorry. I would have loved to yeah. make a cake for you. I can't do it. Or – then get over the fact that you're cutting your prices. If you feel, which one makes you feel worse? Selling them a cake at 350 or selling them a cake at 150 and doing the work of a 350 cake for a 150 cake? Which which is worse for you? Oh, good question. I know, that's why I do what I do. <laughs> I haven't done the I haven't turned down one yet because they get excited. They're like, they know me and they're like, Ooh, I, I have the perfect cake for this person for their, their birthday's coming up. And they, they want to be generous. They want to be nice and do something. Well, you nice just answered your own question. Friend, you know, you just answered yeah. your own question. You would rather, yeah. you would rather steeply discount your pricing to make these people feel good. So if that's kind of a ministry for you, uh, great. I'm thinking that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I, I, yeah. I was wondering, can I look at it like that? Like, it's not of, course. Like, of course you can look at it like that, but I wondered if that was just, I don't want to be like the cop out, like, well, this is what I do for a living. And I think that's the thing that women especially tend to do is like, well, I'll just give away my work. No, and don't do that. You know, now, listen, I'm telling you not to undervalue. It's their problem if they can't afford it. I run into people all the time that do something amazing. I go, how much does that cost? And they tell me, and I'm like, well, that's not going to happen for me. Right. <laughs> Let me ask you this I wish question. People would say that. Let me ask um, you this question, Samantha. Are, mm -hmm. And you probably already said this. So if you said this, I apologize. But are you debt free right now? I did not say it, but I am, except oh. for my mortgage. Except for your mortgage. So you, you have a fully funded emergency fund? Yes. Okay, cool. And again, this may be an unpopular opinion, but I th I still think you're doing a ministry at $350 per cake. You know, now, if you want to go down a little bit lower, that's fine. But I, I don't want to say you're doing more ministry or it, it is a ministry because your your cakes are a little bit cheaper. You know, I, I still think you still yeah, do a good ministry that. at three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. That's you, that's ministry into my home. Do you long term, you. Samantha, want to have your own thing, or is this always just going to be something fun on the side for you? Yeah, it's a good question. Probably just on the side. Yeah, well, then you get yeah. to decide. You get to decide a who you do a cake for and b what you price it at. Stop overthinking it. Stop feeling guilty. If you're okay discounting your cake prices for people that you know. Uh, or friends of friends who can't afford your normal price, then be fine with that. Yeah. But if you also feel like it's too much, you can't serve the whole world. It's not your problem that they can't afford your cake. You got to stop taking all this on you. But at the same time, you got an amazing heart, and that's why you do this. And Ken, if she discounts those prices, she can't say, well, you know, it's worth three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, no. yeah, you can't, you can't get upset that. about it. Exactly. That's right. You got to decide. Attitude. 
Uh, but if you'd like to send one of those cakes to Anthony and I, we would uh, be happy to sample that and uh, reply. I like that. You said sample. I was about to say, I ain't paying $350 for no cake. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Neither am I. But that's just because we don't value that. But right. hey, good stuff. Hey, thank you for the call, Samantha. You are a great lady. You're doing great stuff. Love it. All right, folks, don't move. More of The Ramsey Show coming right up. Ramsey Show continues. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Anthony O'Neill, and we're taking your questions about your life, your work, your money, your relationships. Hey, you want to move up the ladder? I'd love to help you figure out how to get promoted. Hey, you got some relationship stuff and money, uh, especially if you're single. AO is on call, ready to go, and we are here to help you. 888 825 Hey, uh, big news. Uh, the Entree Leadership Summit 2022 has been launched. It has been announced. The dates, and here we go. It's going to be May 22nd through 25, May 22 through 25, 2022. That's at the Hyatt Regency Orlando in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I will be uh, joining that speaker lineup. Of course, Dave Ramsey, Chrissy Wright, Dr. John Deloney, Jamie Kern Lima, the founder of It Cosmetics, Jay Leno, longtime host of The Tonight Show, Will Gadara, who's one of the top American restaurateurs, Jade Simmons, a classical concert pianist, Dr. Henry Cloud, best-selling author of Boundaries, and Pat Lencioni, the best-selling author of Ideal Team Players. If you're a business owner or senior leader and you want to be in the room and grow, the Entree Leadership Summit is a fantastic event. If you'd like to register, text the word SUMMIT to 44 Two two two. Text the word summit. That's two M's. Two four four two two two. That's four four two two two. All right. All those numbers. I'm all confused. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. I know that's the number to call in. Let's go to Newtown or Newton. I'm not sure how you say that. I'll say Newtown. We'll take a guess there. Caroline joins us. Caroline, how can we help? Hi. Um, I have a question about baby step four. Okay, go ahead. So I, so I, my husband and I make 165k a year, but we pay um, thirty-seven thousand dollars a year in daycare expenses for our children, and fifteen thousand dollars a year in um, healthcare benefits. So that, so I didn't know if we take the if we take fifteen percent out of our income after our take-home income. It's like 23% of our take-home income. And I wasn't sure if you take large, high daycare expenses into account. Now, what do you mean? What do you mean? Hold on. Help me out here. Break this down again. You're paying your, – your household income is $165,000 a year, correct? Gross. Okay, yeah. gross. All right, cool. So baby step number four is you're going to invest 15% of your gross income – and either into a 401k or a Roth IRA or a Roth 401k. So then after you make that investment, then you pay your bills. And so your daycare just goes inside of your normal budget from whatever you have after your net pay. Now, your health care should be coming out of your check automatically uh, through y'all's employer. Or are you self-employed? No, the the healthcare costs do come out of our paycheck. Okay, cool. But our daycare costs are twenty eight percent of our income. Right, but what Anthony's yeah. saying is it doesn't matter. What baby step four is is you're taking fifteen percent of your income and you're investing that towards right. retirement. It has nothing to do with daycare. Yeah, and your daycare that that's an expense that you and your husband sign up for. So it's just like me. I have a golf expense. I, I chose that expense, um, and so I think what you've got to do is just go ahead and take fifteen percent out, um, and then also after that you got to add your daycare to your budget, and that's a part of it. Okay. Yeah. Thank right. you. Thank Good you question. for the call. Yeah, absolutely. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. Let's go to Paula, who joins us now in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Paula, how can we help? 
Hi, Paula. Hey guys, how are you guys doing today? We are living the dream. What are you doing? Oh, living the dream. Also, quick Good. question for both uh, of you because you guys are two of my favorite uh, Ramsey personalities, of course. Um, <clears throat> so, I do coaching and staff developing for a child care corporation, and um, I received a, a recent offer um, about and it. it comes out to about ten thousand dollars more than what I, the offer is of what I make right now. Um, now my dilemma is um, that um, I do travel for my company. I live in Oklahoma City, but I do travel for my company, and so um, and so the travel would be it, it would be really a lateral move. Like the insurance would basically be the same. Um, the um you know the only thing that will be different would be the pay and then let me say this i would lose my company car that i do, that i do drive um because it's a lot more travel to um states that um we have we have schools in in the states that i live in but it would be a lot more travel as far as more far away travel because i i do fly some but sometimes you know it's just easier just to jump in the car and drive by the time you get to the airport waiting two hours you know that kind of thing sure okay so, so um which job so that's the only thing it'd really be a lateral move with a pay increase but the thing is also i love my job i'm not unhappy Okay, so that's the only question I have. All this money stuff, it's basically a wash. I never make a decision uh, in my work about money. It's always okay. about meaning because, again, if I'm doing work that I yeah. love that produces a result that I care deeply about, I call that passion and mission, then mm-hmm. I, will, I will adjust my lifestyle and I'm going to be very happy. So the current job you're in, you love it. Does not sound Absolutely. like we got that emotion for this new offer, correct? Right. And I I mean, I would love to do this as well. Um, And then but this is another question I have for you, um, Ken, not to leave you out of the conversation, Anthony. That's okay. But but this is what, you know, another question is so because of the travel, because at least when I'm in Oklahoma, I can like maybe a couple times, you know, maybe every other month, every three months I work in our schools in Oklahoma. This would be total. Um, you know, mostly travel away. Um, and so I wouldn't be in Oklahoma as much. And so I'm, you know, I'm in, and I'm only home on the weekends. Like I'm traveling now, I'm driving home now um, from, you know, and I'm only home on the weekends anyway. But I was wondering, let me ask you this, if I, if because of this new position, could I even negotiate some t- more time at home with this new job? If I, I'd even keep the same pay that I have if maybe I had like three days a, a month out, you know, that I could be home during Maybe, but Paula, yeah. Paula, you got uh, you got to stop. Stop giving me okay. all these okay. reasons. Whew, thank okay. you. <laughs> listen, listen. Thank you help, help you love your current job. Yes. Right. You're trying to talk yourself into this other job and and if you take it, unless I'm missing something, you're not super excited about this this new job offer or this new job offer doesn't offer you this unbelievable ladder. If it's true, you haven't told me yet. So that's the two-part question. Do you love okay. the work that you'll be doing in the new job? That's A. And then B, will it lead you up the ladder that you want to climb? Yes. It will? And, and yes to both of those. So you will. So you will love the new job. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, then I don't know what we're talking about. Take the new job. Well, Well, I just, I I don't want to be motivated. You know, I don't, uh, money is not a motivator for me either. Well, wait a second. You, I know that you already said that, that it was basically a wash because they're paying you 10,000 more, but you're going to lose the company car. So that's a real expense for you. So you said it was a wash, not me. Here's the deal. If it is a, (laughs) if it is a good opportunity for you to move up the ladder, meaning Can you move up the ladder faster and better with the new job versus the current job? Yes or no? Yes. (laughs) Well, this is this conversation is over. Paula, stop thinking about it. (laughs) Take the job. And yes, if you want to ask them if you can uh, be home a little bit more, fine. They've offered you the job. Certainly can mention it. We don't demand it. We just ask. Uh, but you're, you're just over analyzing this. And folks, let me just and again, I'm not picking on Paula. Listen. All of us overthink. 
break it down. I'll nah, speak for you, brother. I don't know there. Will I love the work? Will the work, the offer, allow me to move up where I want to go? The answer is yes and yes. Stop thinking. Start doing. My goodness. God kicks a door open, I don't go, God, are you sure? <laughs> All right, don't move. More Ramsey Show coming right up. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org backslash budget. We absolutely believe in it. Welcome back, America. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. We're coming to you live from our Ramsey Solutions World Headquarters in Nashville. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague, Anthony O'Neill. And, oh, it's our favorite part of the show, A.O., as I look through the glass. Oh, boy, in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stray stage, rather, is Tracy. Hi, Tracy. How are you? Hi, Ken. How are you? Hi, I'm Anthony. I'm telling you, we're having a blast. So now, where do you live? I live in Columbia, South Carolina. All right. So drove in from Yes, Columbia? drove in. Okay. Originally from Memphis, Tennessee. All right. So we got a Tennessee gal here. Yes, sir. Do you know how to make really good barbecue? Oh, you know I do. Come on. You know it. I'm telling you, I just had a feeling when you said Memphis, because that is where the good stuff is. Awesome. So how much debt? Debt did you pay off? So I paid off thirty-six thousand five hundred and twenty-two dollars. Wow! Debt. And wow. how long did it take? It took about fourteen months. Fourteen months. And what was your range of income during that time? I made about seventy-nine thousand. Wow! What, what do you do? I am a master sergeant in the United States Air Force. Oh well, thank you for your service. You thank are you, a great thank American. You. Thank you, thank you. I enjoy what I do. Currently, um, I'm stationed at Shaw Air Force Base. I'm the superintendent of the financial management directorate at the Ninth Air Force. Asset. Okay. Well, thank you so much. That is so awesome. Uh, what type of debt was it? So half of it was student loans, mm -hmm. and then the other half was credit cards. Oh, oh. so you were super normal. Yeah. <laughs> super normal. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I love it. Okay, so what happened? When did it happen for you to go, all right, I'm going to knock this out? So... So how it started, how my uh, financial peace journey started was um, I had a first sergeant who introduced me um, to financial peace. He came, he came up to me and just told me his story. He invited me to his church to see what FPU was about. I joined, um, went to the next FPU class. I think it was 12 weeks. Um, we went through everything. I learned the, um, all the tools it took to be become debt free. But I was Dave-ish. The yeah. whole time, just, you know, doing, um, I knew I didn't want any more um, loans. I didn't want any more um, credit cards. But uh, January of 2020, I got promoted. Ah. So I was super excited, but I still had that gloom of debt over me. Yeah. And I was like, I I'm not doing this anymore. So I vowed January of 2020 that any extra penny was going towards debt. Mm. I wow. was going to, you know, work that every dollar app mm. every night and just make sure my money was going where it's, it's supposed to be going to get out of debt. Wow, I so. love that. Now, what church were, are you a member of in Columbia? So in Columbia, I'm a men, member of Shandon Baptist Church. Okay, okay, yes. okay. And did you take FPU there? No, I took FPU at in Wichita Falls, Texas at First Baptist Church. Okay, okay. So okay. I was stationed right. in yeah. Texas. Yeah, yeah we know exactly uh, about nice. that church. A very... Very, very good church. So what did it take uh, throughout this year and two months to get out of debt? So it took, you know, 
I love to travel. So that's where most of my money was going to. I love, I have a large family. We love to just get up and go. Okay. So it took just being um, intentional okay. um, and making sure that, you know, our, my money was going where it was supposed to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, not eating out as much. Not that eating was, out. That was, that was a big thing for my family is not eating out as much. So Okay, yeah. okay. So, Who are your biggest cheerleaders? So my biggest cheerleaders were my family. Um, first, my mom. My mom has been my support system for a long time, forever. Um, so my mom was my biggest cheerleader. My oldest daughter, Taylor, Ava, Aubrey, and Alana, those were you know, a huge part of my fan base, but my mentors, um, any, every one of my mentors, I let them know what my goals were mm. financially. Mm. And each one of them always checked up on me to make sure that I was still getting after those goals, even though life was still happening. Yeah. So. so Tracy, I'm looking at the math, right? Uh -huh. I'm just going to ask you straight forward. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to bless somebody. Yes. You were close to $40,000 in debt. Yes. Making $80,000 in income. Mm -hmm. I'm going to assume that you're a single mother. Yes. And I see three, four, 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 four little girls. Four beautiful, beautiful queens out there. Yes. And so that means 50% of your income went towards paying off debt. Absolutely. And then you have a lot of people saying, if I got all these kids, I can't do this on my own. One, here's the question. How did you do that? <laughs> and then two, what was the hardest thing throughout this journey in the process of getting out of debt? So how did I do it? I brought them along the journey. I let them know what I was trying to do. Wow. So just making sure um, they would, you know, sit with me and, and, you know, as I'm trying to decide on purchasing something, they're like, no mom, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to um, become debt free. Remember that? Ooh. Oh, let's, let's put that to the side. Let's wait on that. Let's hold off on that. So, um, which one was that? Cause one of them that, back there laughing. So it, it, all of them probably <laughs> laughing. But <laughs> Ava, Ava is, you know, she, she, she'll come and sit next to me. And, oh, you see yes, yes, yes. I love it. So, I what love were it. the conversations beyond the specifics of those decisions mm -hmm. that, that kind of came out of that as you're this these young ladies are watching their mother uh take on a monumental task so the conversations about just college because i had to explain to them mm -hmm. why i had that uh, student loan debt, what mm. student loans are um so the conversations that came out of it is that you can get scholarships you can get grants you can pay your way through college you don't have to go into debt no you lying so you that, are so lying right that now. was uh hey, yeah what no, yeah. I'm just what you. was yeah. one of the toughest things or biggest sacrifices in this journey? Oh, one of the toughest things um, was, like I said, travel, mm. just sitting still, sitting, still. sitting still and knowing that knowing to live like no other today so I can live and give like no other. Mm. So um, just just being still and knowing that I won't be in debt forever. This process won't be going on forever. So see, that's very interesting because you love travel. It's a big part of your family mm -hmm. uh, memories and experiences. Yeah. It's kind of like, this is an expectation. This is what we mm -hmm. do. So is it, was it worth it to put off those trips and how beautiful is it going to be when you get on that next trip? Absolutely. It was worth every, every minute, every moment, everything that we've learned. My, our money um, means so much more to us now. Yeah. So you got it, another trip planned? Not quite yet, but, <laughs> but, but we're, we're, we're going somewhere. You're, you're thinking about it. Yes, absolutely. On our way um, back home, we're going to go through Memphis to visit granddaddy. So. I, have a, I have a fun question. What you got? Is uh, if God brings the right man, is marriage in your future? Oh, man, that's a good one. Absolutely. <laughs> I am okay. absolutely right. ready so now, to get married again. So, Tracy, so. now listen, yeah. uh, don't don't let no knucklehead come in there. You worked hard. Yes. Oh, that's okay. right. Mm -hmm. You don't work hard. He need to come here working double hard. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay? Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. And no, tell I, him to get his stuff in order yeah. before you even let him put a ring on it. Exactly. You, you know, know what I mean? Tell yes. him you got two brothers over here, a, yeah. a brother and a vanilla brother that <laughs> yeah. got your back. I appreciate the vanilla. I appreciate the vanilla because I thought you were going to say pale. Uh, I haven't been out in the sun yet this year, and uh, so I. Uh, but I appreciate the vanilla. I'll take that. All right, so we got the ladies with us, right? Yes. We got the girls. We got Taylor, Ava, Aubrey, and Alana. Did yes. I say that right? Yes. Come on up. Are they going to do this yes. with you? and my mother. Uh, oh, my mother. Yes. This is uh, Evangeline Hardaway, but my kids call her Baba. All right, so y'all, come, come on, on up. up. We got to do this. I'm assuming, Tracy, that they've been rehearsing. 
Oh, yeah. Because they got the oh, matching yes. outfits, the yeah. dresses. They look lovely. Look at yes. those girls. Come, come on, on come in. On. Squeeze on in. All y'all. right, everybody in. And uh, all right, so is everybody ready? And we got Mama in there. There she is. She's look at that smile. She's proud. <laughs> That's great. All right. So Don't here worry. we go. If everybody's ready, we got Tracy, who paid off thirty six thousand dollars in fourteen months, making seventy nine thousand dollars. She's joined on stage by Mama, Taylor, Ava, Aubrey, and Alana. Let's hear your debt free scream. One, two, three. We're debt free. <laughs> There it is, holding that note yeah. out too. I yes. like that, Ao. She sings in the choir. You get to <laughs> get hold that note. Oh, that is so awesome. I you know, it. Tracy, you inspire so many people. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing your story with us. A single mom can do it. You can do it. Absolutely. Love that story. Thank you, Tracy and girls and Mama for sharing that journey with us. All right, we're gonna go out and celebrate with them. Don't move. More Ramsey Show coming right around the corner. Welcome back, America. You're listening to The Ramsey Show. I'm Kent Coleman, joined by my colleague, Anthony O'Neill. We're so excited that you're with us as we take your calls about your life, your money, your mission and your work, your relationships. We are here for you, 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. You know, Kim, before we go to uh, Dan, um, I-, I really wanted to just just make sure that we just highlight what just happened. Yeah. I, I don't want to fly by that. This was a single mother of four yeah. Tracy. kids. Tracy. Yeah. Right? Uh, from Columbia, South Carolina, who lived off of about $30,000 in one year. Mm-hmm. I want to hear this. I want y'all to hear this. She lived off of $30,000 in income with four kids as a single mother so she could pay off nearly $40,000. Yes. So when y'all call in here with these excuses and you don't have any kids Uh-oh. and you make $50,000 a year, $40,000 a year, and you talking about you can't pay off $30,000, I'm going to be like, Dave, hush up. <laughs> because, I mean, if you see what she can do, yeah. then there's no excuses. The yeah. greatest enemy to our success is our excuse. Yeah. If you genuinely and truly want to do it, you will shut up with the excuses and go after it. Yeah. So I just wanted to highlight that. Tracy is my hero. Yes. And then when we went out there, Kim, what did she say? I, I just graduated master class so she can go out there and teach other people. Yeah, she's a financial coach. It. Just finished our financial Woo. coach master training. Uh, if you missed it last segment, go check it out, the podcast of it over here on YouTube. Rewind it. Uh, that's why we do the debt-free screams is so that you can hear the journeys of others and be inspired uh, to overcome your own challenges. Ayo, I love that you called it out. And on top of that, serving our country in the Air Force, Uh, Just a phenomenal, phenomenal lady. And what a joy it was to meet those beautiful little girls. Uh, I will tell you, the youngest one could have co-hosted the show. She really could. She has so much personality. We should have brought her in here and had had her done a segment with us. It would have been the best segment in the history of the show. She is uh, just such a fun, fun, fun little gal. So good stuff. 888-825-5225 is the number. Let's go to Scranton, Pennsylvania, where Dan joins us. Dan, how can we help? Uh, hi, Ken and Anthony. I'm actually calling from German, Pennsylvania, the birthplace of first aid. Oh, and fantastic. I, th- I thank you guys for your financial first aid and Ken for your career first aid and, and AO for your educational first aid. So, oh, thank you, sir. How can we help that. you today? Uh, my wife and I are in baby step two. When we began our total money makeover last July, we put our second mortgage in the baby step six. Uh, but now with our income plus uh, the minimum payments that we made on our second mortgage, we're wondering if we should put it into baby step two. Uh, when you say second mortgage, what, what, what kind of mortgage did you take out? Um, it was uh, it was a it was a mortgage. We were it was going to be a home equity loan. Um, okay. The bank 
Yeah. You know, to, to, yeah, yeah. So if if it is something like that, then yes, you're going to go ahead and add that into baby step number two. Okay, so your primary right. your primary mortgage will go ahead and stay uh, in baby step six, uh, but anything extra that you took out, yes, that that's debt. I mean, well, actually, it's all debt, uh, but I do want you to go ahead and add that in baby step number two. Yeah, thank you for the call, Dan. All right, let's see. Abel is up next in Seattle, Washington. Abel, how can we help? How are you guys doing? Uh, shout out to Tracy for paying off all her debt. Hopefully, I could get there too. Yeah, yeah. you can. And- you can. Yeah, so right now I'm upside down on my car. Um, I make about $24 an hour. It's like 50000 a year. Okay. And I just needed help just getting out of this. Okay. What kind of car is it, man? Uh, 2018 Mitsubishi. Okay, yeah, Mitsubishi. Uh, how much do you owe on it? Uh, 24000 I rolled some negative equity onto it also. Oh, Lord Jesus. How much, do you, um, how much is it worth? Birth about 15, 17, 16. Oh, my yeah. Lord, we in a problem. Okay. What other, what, what other kind of debt do you have? Right now, I have no credit cards, okay. luckily. Um, student loans? I do have student loans, student okay. loans that are in deferment. How much are those? Um, uh, it's about 50. 50K. 000. Okay. All right. All right. We get, what else you got, man? Um, that's really about it. Um, I'm about to get a raise in about two to three years and it's going to make me go up to about 80 to 90 a year okay. all right okay cool great cool great cool 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 all right so here's the thing cars worth seventeen thousand dollars you owe twenty four thousand dollars on it because you wrote in negative equity um do you have any cash in your savings right now just a thousand dollars i've okay. been watching you guys for the past like month like right. religiously so i'm rocking with you i'm rocking with you okay cool um how long would it take you to save up five grand I'll say about six months. Six months. You make $50,000 a year. I also own a home with my wife. Um, okay. And I pay about 1200 What does your wife other make? other side of the mortgage. What, what, she other? makes uh, about eighty. She, okay, so wait, wait, wait. Yeah, now we're at one thirty. Now we're at one thirty. Yeah, bro. Uh, 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 hold on. And um, so between one thirty, it'll take you six months to get $5,000? Well, she also has her own credit card debt and student loans that she's paying and we just got married so we're trying to find a way to balance our finances all right well well, we have we have two questions we have two things we need to address um it sounds like y'all are not combining everything together Uh, i'll let i'll let our married guy talk about that i'm a single guy i talk to the single people so i'll let him talk about well i'll just i'll jump in very quick because ao can get you out of this and tell you what you need to do but abel here's what we teach when you're married it's it's our debt it's not her credit cards it's not her student loans it's ours yeah so you know you're still in a mindset and that's okay we're not criticizing you but this is this is this is leave and cleave and and i don't know what your wedding vows were but we're joining together and it's not just because of what we we believe about marriage is because we've got to be on the same page to get out of this debt or this is going to become bigger than a money problem. This will be a marriage problem. I can guarantee you that. So you started off the call going, I make 50. We didn't even know about the wife. We didn't know what she makes. No, this is how this goes. So you need to give AO the new number starting with, we make a combined income of 130,000. We have total debts, including whatever mama's debts are that you just married. All right. Right. So I'd start over and then AO can walk you through this, but this is a combined situation here. Yeah. Real quick. So what do you say combined income? Income, total debt you all have combined income for the household is 130 i would say combined debt now would have to be about 100 okay, okay. all right cool great so this window you're gonna work the debt snowball man have you taken financial peace university inside of ramsey plus you and you uh, and your I wife have the, i have the app I have that. I have the app. I have. I haven't got anything else. I just have the dollar app. Every dollar app. Okay. Cool. Great. This is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have you stand online. Madison's gonna give you and your wife a free year subscription on Ken and I on Ramsey Plus to get you all in it. Here's what I really want you to do. I want you to consider selling the car. Okay. And you're going to take out a loan for the difference of whatever you do not and cannot sell it for. So let's say for an example, you sell it for 17. That means you're negative 7,000. You're going to take out a loan for $7,000. Yes. I am saying take out a loan. Why? Because you're going from $24,000 in debt down to $7,000 in debt in that car. All right. The reason why I said save up 5k, because I'm going to take 5k and go pay cash for a car. 
You lower your debt. You don't have a, um, a monthly payment. And then what you got to do is you got to really work the debt snowball. Because now, let's say for an example, the car was the only thing that you had with $130,000 of income. I will say, yo, let's get very aggressive with attacking the car. But right now, if we can get this thing down to $7,000 um, or $5,000 if you sell it cash, um, then I, I love that math because we lower our debt and then also we pay cash for a car car temporary and then once you and your wife become debt free get a fully funded emergency fund then you can go back out there and buy your better car cash but i want you to stay on the line uh madison's going to take good care of you i want you and your wife to go through this class together so y'all pick a date night um and y'all just go through this together and i promise you you're going to learn a lot from ken myself dave rachel um and our entire team here man but uh such a great question and that's yeah. something that i've been teaching you know, uh, singles, like when we do get married, it is we. So if I get married and my wife has debt, man, y'all may see me on a debt free scream stage one day because now I'm back in debt. Don't, 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 don't tell people this because you ain't going to marry some woman that's got debt. I know you. Oh, well, I don't know. No. I can't say all of that. No. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if God You're presents so me a woman that looks good. With $25,000 in debt, no, bro, I'm going to get her. Well, we're going to pay it. that debt off in like two months, though, James. Real no. quick. I can't be in debt. I, I hate debt. Hey, Abel, you can do this. <laughs> you guys got a combined income to be able to do this, and you can actually go out and make some more money. You need to get gazelle intense. Do what we teach you in financial peace. All right. I want to thank our producer, James Childs, our associate producer today, Madison Browder, and my colleague, AO, and you, America. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studio, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where America hangs out to have a conversation about your life, your money, your work, your legacy, your relationships, and if AO has anything to do with it, well, it's single life of trying to do it right. He's raring and ready to go today. Anthony O'Neill, my colleague, joins me Let's this talk. hour. Let's talk, man. <laughs> Singles, give us a call. Though. I'm going to help. You. Hey, seriously, money and being single, this guy is having a great conversation about it. the single life, making good life decisions, not just money decisions, over on the table with Anthony O'Neill. This thing is a runaway hit over on YouTube. I've never been on the show because I'm married, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I'm still waiting on my invite. Uh, but, no, he's doing great stuff oh, over man. there. Please make sure you join it. Uh, he's on YouTube. Search the table with Anthony O'Neill. Also uh, on your favorite podcast app as well. And uh, don't forget the Ken Coleman Show. We spent hours and hours coming up with that name. A lot of creativity poured into that AO, as you know. And uh, you can check it out where you listen to podcasts, your talk radio station, Sirius XM, and YouTube. 888-825-5225 is the phone number to jump in. 888-825-5225. Let's go to the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California, where Mike joins us. Mike, how can we help? Hi, Ken and Anthony. It's an honor to be speaking with you guys, and thank you for having me on your show. You yeah. bet. What's up? So my question is, and I'll get straight to the point, is do I have, uh, is it possible to have too much money in my emergency fund? And if so, what should I do with that money? Should I invest it? Should I uh, dump it into my mortgage? Uh, I'm just uh, kind of want to get your opinions on what I should do with that. Yeah, man. Uh, yes, there are. There will be times and there can be times when you have too much money in your emergency fund. We want our money to grow as much as possible. Uh, but then we also want to make sure we have enough money liquid uh, to protect us from emergencies that may come up um, and to protect us from going back into debt. So um, what how much money do you have in your savings account right now, Mike? $75,000. Okay, cool. Great. All right. Do you have any debt right now? I have no debt except my mortgage. Okay, cool. Great. And uh, you're in L.A. So what, what would you say is 
three to six. Well, what do you do for a living? Let me ask you that for that question first, Mike. I work for the government. Okay. And what would you say your annual income is? Uh, approximately 150,000 a year. Okay. 150 K a year. How old are you, Mike? I am 41 years old. 41. You got that money. Okay, cool. What's your investment portfolio look like right now? Are you investing 15% of your um, income? Yes, sir. I am, uh, I have putting at least 15% towards retirement between my 457B plan and my Roth IRA. So at 40, I'm curious, how much money do you have in your investments? Just short of $300,000. Oh, man, you're living good. You're, you're, you're living good, Mike. Man, I just love it. I'm just asking questions. Well, it wasn't to... always like this. I made a lot of mistakes when I was young. Hey, man, you and I both, and I'm still young. And you're still young. Let's be real. Now, Ken's old, but you and I, we, we young. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. I, love it. I hey. can't wait till you turn 40, man. I'm going to just razz you <laughs> so hard. But, hey, seriously, um, <laughs> Mike, I, what are some of your goals? Are Do you own a home right now? I do own a home. Okay, cool. And um, what? What do? You, how much do you own a home? Uh, I owe approximately four hundred and thirty thousand. Four hundred and thirty k. All right, cool. Um, and what is it worth? Close to a million dollars. Oh yeah, man. I, man, I'm liking you right now, brother. Uh, I like you. Uh, and you said you're married or you single? I am single. Uh oh, ladies. No kid. No, no, no kids at forty. No, sir. Oh, you're, no, a great, sir. you're a great candidate. I need to get you on my show. Oh, I think I, here I we can, go. I can have him hooked up uh, by tomorrow afternoon. Guy calls for financial <laughs> advice, and AO's going to get him married. I so love it. Here's here's my advice, man. Um, you're already investing 15%. Um, you're already living below your means, clearly. Um, I would take that $75,000 and invest that into your home. I will go ahead and jump over to baby step number six, because we're going to skip over baby step number five, because you don't have but any kids. If I, if I invest 75000 that won't leave me any... Uh, money into my yeah. uh, emergency fund. I, I didn't say seventy five, so I will say I said I would take some of the seventy five and invest oh, it I into see. your I'm home. Sorry. Yeah, and so with yes, you working for the government, um, whatever you're comfortable with. If I was you, I'm going to I'm gonna leave three months in the account uh, because you have a very stable job with the government, uh, and so I would take the rest of that and going ahead and invest that into the home. And bro, I would just really start attacking your home. If you're already doing fifteen percent, uh, there's really no reason why to start doing more. You're young, three hundred thousand in the account uh, in your investments you can leave about you know twenty to twenty five thousand dollars inside of your emergency fund put 50k towards your mortgage that's going to bring, bring you below 400 with your kind of income and your dedication you can be completely debt free on to baby set number seven building wealth and giving very generously uh, within the next three years and so I, I will go ahead and attack it maybe four years uh, but um, yeah. I will go ahead and attack I that. might jump in here uh, and and I'm stepping into AO territory here go ahead Okay, but he's he's single. You said he's a prime candidate. If he goes and gets himself an Anthony O'Neill woman, debt free, and she's got the double income, they could pay that house off even faster. I mean, absolutely. You so know, we're, I just said that's how we juice this. So you're trying to say pay off the house, but also go get you a woman who's debt free and working. <laughs> Who's debt? Who's debt free and working? And so we pay it off even faster. I mean, I, I, I can't go. I'm sitting man. next to you. And I'm going. Hey, you that's how it. you get it done I'm, faster. I, trust me, I'm thinking the same thing. But I mean, it's it's this dating world out here. And and correct me if I mean, bro, it's hard. It's hard out here for us. You you're know saying, what I'm saying? It, you're saying it's. Uh, it's You've been a, off the market for what? Twenty years? Twenty three. Twenty three years. It's night and day from twenty three years ago. Thank you very ago. much. Thank you very much. Been married twenty three years. I don't even know what it would be like. <laughs> like I shudder at the thought of that. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a oh. minefield, is what you're telling me. Uh, well, I don't want to disrespect the ladies out there, but it you is. You don't difficult. have to. It is difficult. Okay. If if you're a good person, good man or woman, it is difficult to find a good opposite. Do you think that you now? Okay. Oh Lord. This is good. This is good. Do be you good. think a guy like Mike, yeah, who's forty one, debt free, you know, you know, is he a target? Is he a target for, for, for you know, and this isn't all about women, but the point is the same thing of men, same thing with women. If they're debt free, are they targets for loser dudes who are trying to kind of take Here. advantage of them because they're so so financially stable? Does that happen? Again, I am not the relationship personality or relationship expert. No, but, but you're the my, single man yeah, from who's in my good shape. Expertise, he, believe it or not, Mike is not the target because I, I think a young lady will look at him and say, if you're this guy, why are you still single? So there will be questions up front. Now, once they get those questions answered, oh, they're going to love That's it. That's what I'm saying. The security. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. you got to be careful is what I'm saying. Absolutely. 
You yeah. don't want to take on a bunch of debt, a bunch of craziness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can take on some debt. Yeah. All right, if it's the right person, but you don't want to take on crazy who's looking at you as a but ticket. Can't, but can you got to stop saying a single people debt free can't date someone with debt? I didn't say that. Oh, okay. I'm not saying anything. Okay. Uh, first of all, I am not in the business of telling anybody who they can date. Okay? <laughs> that's not my that's not my thing. I'm just saying you have to be careful. You do have to be careful. You got to be wise. You got to make sure that her or his money uh, mindset is on the same as yours. Uh, but Mike, man, that's that that's a solid one right there. Ladies, y'all need to y'all need to YouTube him, look him up on Instagram, <laughs> find him. Say we, I heard you on the Ramsey show. Yeah. Poor Mike is now going on all of his social media channels and changing his name. Uh, hey Mike, great job. <laughs> Awesome uh, man, you are crushing it. You are on your way to being really, really wealthy. Uh, really appreciate the call. Good stuff. All right, don't go anywhere. Anthony O'Neill, Ken Coleman, sitting in on this hour of The Ramsey Show. show continues from our Ramsey Solutions studios in Nashville. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague Anthony O'Neill. We're taking your calls about your life, whether you want to move up the ladder in your career and make some more money, uh, or you got those money questions, or again, when AO's here, we're having some fun today. You, you're single and trying to figure out the money situation and the relationship equation. We got AO there for you as well. But hey, before we get to the phones, uh, when it comes to making big money, or big life moves like buying a home, getting married, having a baby. The last thing on your mind when you're thinking about those big decisions is the right insurance coverage. And we understand that. Those big changes are overwhelming, but it would be even more overwhelming to find yourself in a situation where you or your family weren't covered properly. Uh, if not having the time or energy is what's keeping you from getting the right insurance coverage, we got that covered. Use one of our endorsed local provider or ELP insurance agents to help. Our ELPs are independent agents who find you the best coverage at the best price, free of charge. That's right. An independent agent shops a variety of options, finding you the best, and explains all the technical lingo so you know exactly what you're getting for free. All you have to do is text the word insurance to 33789. That's insurance. Text that word to 33789. 888-825-5225 is the number. Back to the phones we go. Gina joins us in Boston, Massachusetts. Gina, how can we help? Hi. Th thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. Um, so my question is, if it will take me a while to pay off my student loans, should I part start putting at least something into a 401k now as opposed to waiting a couple years and having nothing in there? So, Jenny, let me ask you this question. What do you think you should do? Honestly. Uh, well, I'm not sure. That's why I'm calling. Okay. Um, I, I understand. Yeah. I was just wondering if you had to put a, if you had to do a, your own little thought, what, what would you do? What, My own thought? I guess I would put, like, some something there so that it's not at zero when I'm done with all the debt, but um, another factor in is that um my company my publishing house was just bought by a different publishing house so we have a different 401k plan now mm -hmm. and now they are giving us 25 percent of whatever we put into our 401k okay which was not the situation before cool so so now people are telling me that i'm throwing away money if i'm not putting anything into the 401k okay. um because i wasn't doing that before gotcha um so i have about 51,000 in loans. Um, and I'm just, I, I don't know which way to go. Do you have any other debt or is it just the 51,000 in student loans? Just the, just the student loans. I graduated with 83,000 and I've paid off 32,000. Good for you. Come How much on. money are you making, Gina? Yeah. 
Um, well, my my salary is thirty six thousand, but my take home pay is about twenty four. Okay, great! Wow, you're really crushing it. Yeah, you really are. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, now are you living with family or friends, or are you living on your own, Gina? I was for I've been out of school for two years, um, and I was living with my parents. And just this month, I moved into my own apartment. So okay. that right. was another factor of okay, I can't spend as much as before, but it just felt like it was time to be out of my parents' sure. house and. Yeah be on my own. What's so, your scheduled yeah. payoff date? If everything goes as is, when do you expect to be done with the 51000 Um. Well, if I keep doing the minimum payment, it says 13 years. Um, but that's not what you've been doing. Right. Right. That That's not what I've been doing. Um, but I haven't... This is a great question. I guess I haven't figured out because I've only been in my new apartment for a month okay. and I've never been out on my own before. I'm only 25. Um, and so I guess I need to figure out how much extra I need to be giving to my loans now that I can Come afford. On. There you um, go. Yeah. That's the first thing you need to figure out how long it's going to take you based on gazelle intensity. You working a second job is maybe an option. Uh, how long is it going to take you to pay off the 51000 You're asking Anthony a question on the 401k, and you don't even have a good idea how long it's actually going to take. It's not going to take you 13 years. I mean, you, you crushed it. I know you work, you're living with your parents, but the reality is is that you work gazelle intense, and you've already knocked off you know 30 plus thousand, if I remember correctly. And, and so if yeah. you get after this at the age of 25, you can knock this out a lot quicker than you think. So yeah. let's start with that number and try to figure that out. And then, A.O., uh, why should she not uh, start investing in her 401K? Why are her friends and all these advisors wrong? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because that 13 years is going to turn into about 20 years. Um, and here's the thing. A lot of people think, well, if I could put in, because what we see is when you have debt, you're only going to invest about 1% to 3% of your income because you're trying to get another 1% to 3% uh, with the match. And, and I understand the thinking. Uh, but what I do not understand is, well, why would you want to put an extra $100, $200 over there when you could put that same $100, $200 over here and get out of debt quicker? When you get out of debt quicker, instead of you investing 1% to 3%, you're investing 15%. So not only would you catch up, you were surpassed where you thought you could have been if you just honestly followed the baby steps. So what I'm, what I'm telling to you is, Machina, is I wouldn't worry about investing and missing out. Because what we're teaching you is not just how to uh, invest and, and build wealth today. We're teaching you how to get out of debt. So when you do build wealth, you can continue building wealth and building a lot of it. And so what I would encourage you to do is I, I, I want Ken to talk before we go to break real quick. So I'm, I'm going to shut up. Um, do not invest into the 401k. I want you to get on the debt snowball and put all of your extra income towards that. Now, I want to challenge you. Bringing home $24,000 a year, that is low. So we need to figure out how to get you an extra part-time job so you can put at least $10,000 towards your student loans. And that'll go from 13 years to five years, about five years in a couple of months. But it's going to save you about $10,000 in interest. So, Ken, is there anything we could do to get an extra $10,000 yeah. a year? Well, there's a couple ways to do it. I think the – I think the uh uh, part-time job and making some additional money. And even if you can do it in your particular field that you're in to get some additional experience, you've got this expertise, you're out of school. A lot of times people think, well, I got to go drive Uber. Well, that's certainly a possibility or any other part-time job, delivering pizza, whatever it is. But sometimes we forget to look for opportunities in our field that get us that valuable experience. I've already got this expertise. I've gone to school for this. I'm in this field. And could I offer that in other places where you can call it consulting or whatever you want to call it, but it'd be contract work where you can really rack up some money. And I would continue uh, to do what Anthony said, which is just put every extra dime you've got into this and then there's going to be plenty of time for you to invest. Uh, but right now, the reason we don't want you skipping the baby steps is because we want all of that money getting you out of debt, and then you will catch up. You're actually not going to miss out. If it takes you three years, and I think you could pay off the 50 in three or less. I really believe that because we're not even taking into account you're in your first job, essentially, or early on the ladder, and you getting a promotion. I'd like to see you making fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. What, what needs to be true for you to get promoted? And then the additional job. I actually think someone of your age, 
and pay off that 51000 in three years or less. I really believe that. Um, and then the amount of money that you're supposedly leaving on the table, uh, you're going to catch up. Absolutely. All of that. Absolutely. Because you have no debt – and you're still going to be in your late 20s. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at a 27, 28-year-old payoff. I think you're that old. I think you're 25 now. I think you can do this. And the question is, is how intense do you want to get? And when we preach gazelle intensity, we're, let's give you the image here. We're talking about this little deer, this deerish animal that is running for its life. We're not talking about a competition. We're talking about survival. Yes. And and it's being it's it's got a cheetah running after it, right? Or, or a lion or whatever. You've got to run for your life on this. And if you do this, I think you'd be shocked how quickly you could pay off fifty one thousand. So good, Ken. You you preaching today, Ken. Well, you know, I'm next to the preacher. I'm a preacher's son. So, you know, you put me in this situation where you get preaching and then I start preaching and then what are we doing, man? We're just we need to take an offering. You know what? We got a good band. I mean, the music director and, and our producer, James Child. James Child's a world class uh, engineer, <laughs> producer, songwriter. This guy, I don't know. We should we we do need to pass the plate. It wouldn't go over well. It'd be the last time we did it, but it would be fun. I'm kidding. Hey. You do realize this show is free. More of your free advice right around the corner. This is The Ramsey Show. Let's we'll start playing some cup. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices, and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings. Ramsey Show continues from our Ramsey Solutions studios in Nashville. Thrilled to have you with us. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my colleague Anthony O'Neill, and we are taking your calls, 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Hey, this is your last weekend to shop our famous $10 sale. Learn how to make faster and real progress with your money. And in your career, when you check out our famous $10 sale, you can save up to 60% on over 40 best-selling books and budgeting tools like My Proximity Principle and Anthony O'Neill's newly designed book, The Graduate Survival Guide. Don't forget his number one bestseller, Debt-Free Degree, as well. All of these books make for great gifts. Shop our $10 sale at the online store at RamseySolutions.com. Plus, this is also your last weekend to enter to win our Ramsey Cash Giveaway. We're giving away the grand prize of $5,000 in cash this week. Enter daily for extra chances to win. No purchase necessary. You must be 18 or older to win. Text the word CASH to 33789. Text CASH to 33789 to enter our giveaway now. All right, let's go back to the phones. Joshua is on the line in Louisville, Kentucky. Joshua, how can we help? Hello, Joshua. All right. Well, hey, here. Oh, there we go. There we go. Sorry, yes, I had to sir. Meetings. My kids were talking. Uh, oh, I get it. No that. worries. How can we help? <laughs> yeah. Uh, my uh, hopefully a quick question. My uh, my wife and I have an opportunity to uh, take on a well, sort of a staff position with the church. Part of that includes housing on on campus because sort of the, part of the function would be to you know, keep an eye on the place, take care of things around the, around the church, things like that. Um, and so that's part of this base of the compensation is, is housing. Uh, so right now we own our own home. We've been here for about two and a half years now. Um, and so we've had a little bit of equity, but the, but the housing market in our area is up quite a bit. So we would make some money off the sale. Um, uh, but we're, my wife is kind of attached to the house, uh, since it's our first home. Um, and so she, so we're wondering 
whether or not it would be beneficial for us to uh, simply just sell the house uh, and be out from under it, take and pay off most of our debt with what we make, or uh, turn it into a rental property. So I wonder if you guys could give some pointers on that. Well, let's be honest. It's absolutely beneficial for you to sell the house <laughs> financially because you just told us you, you're going to pay off uh, all of your debt or most of your debt. Is that how I heard that? Uh, we'll be a, a majority of it. Uh, right now, we've got uh, it's just under $50,000. Uh, the vast majority of student loans, we've got a couple thousand dollars in um, uh, miscellaneous debt and then uh, credit card. Yeah. Um, the vast majority of student loans. Um, the, and like I said, so we, right now we owe about, I think, 116 roughly on the mortgage. The real estate agent is pretty sure we can sell for around 160. Um, so after fees and everything, we're probably looking at about 40 grand. Yeah, I mean, that uh, just, as far as we clear. So just think about how that fast forwards your debt free journey, and then you're going to knock off the other stuff because you've got reduced expenses with the church housing. So all of a sudden you're in great shape. And, and if you're looking at renting, uh, to try to rent this thing, you're just not going to clear enough. Let's run those numbers. Give AO and I the numbers. If you rent it, what would you rent it for, and what's your mortgage payment? Uh, well, our mortgage payment right now is a thousand, was just under a thousand. Um, I think it was like a nine fifty, nine sixty, something like that, with with insurance, with homeowners insurance. Okay. Um, the uh, I think the estimates, according to a couple of numbers we ran, was about thirteen monthly for a you know for a rental cost. Um, yeah, and then on top of that, you got repairs and stuff you got to deal with as now uh, being a landlord. So you tell me which is the best financial situation. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely leaning towards selling. Uh, my wife is, uh, like I said, she's she's really attached to the house. Um, yeah, because it's, it's our first house. First I get house it. Together, we had our newest kid here, and so it's so she's got an emotional attachment. I get it. So every time to... Stacey and I've moved, we've moved three times, and every time we move, she cries. Uh, it's like a nest, and I get it. That's that's a that's a real thing. I don't discount that, but the reality is, is that renting this thing is really not. It's going to almost be a wash when you talk about repairs and everything. Ao, I, I just, I think it's a relationship question, not a uh, financial question. I, I think you got to sit down with her and go, hey, here's the vision. Here's what this does for us. We can get another house. We can, uh, but but this is going to change our life. I think you have to sit down and really walk through it, the pros and cons. How long are you planning on uh, being with this uh, church, Joshua? Uh, it depends. I mean, we're we're here for you know as long as the Lord has us here. We we moved to Louisville uh, from from Alabama in order to to go to seminary, and it's been a really slow process. So let um, me let me ask so, you this. Let me ask you this question. Um, mm-hmm. um, Let's say you move into it, and two years from now, let's say you you all do not, or you're not at the church. Uh, do you regret selling a home two years later? I'm talking about you. I already know what your wife would say, but two years later, will you regret selling a home? Probably not. No, I mean right right now, I feel, there are times where it feels like the I can't think of the plays in, but the old movie, The Money Pit, um, <laughs> where it's just just constantly stuff happening because an older, it's a little bit of an older house, but it's not bad, but it's cool. it feels like that sometimes. Great. Um, so I, but, uh, but no, I wouldn't regret it. No. Yeah. No. Okay. Cool. Great. I agree with, with, with Ken. Um, it sounds like you and your wife need to get on the same page and just have a good conversation from a financial perspective. It makes mm-hmm. total sense to sell the home, uh, put the rest of it towards the debt. Um, uh, because not only did, does that, um, you, not only does it put forty thousand dollars towards the debt, but it adds another fourteen thousand dollars, or about another twelve thousand dollars that can go towards the debt as well within a year. And so you all will be out of debt very, very quickly um, if you all steward this opportunity the correct way. But uh, I think for me, I, I would rather have peace than in my home with my wife than to have uh, be debt free and I have a little bit of drama in my home with my wife so i agree with ken before y'all make any before you make any decision uh make sure that you and your wife are on the same page and have a real honest conversation and and speak to her heart uh speak to her emotional concerns um and then i think after you do that hopefully you can win over to your side and y'all both have a clear understanding of the big image like i'm not a marriage guy yeah you know the only thing i'd add to this um joshua is have you sat down and showed her okay if we sold it and Anthony's right. Based on what you've been paying in mortgage, after you've put forty grand on the debt, you're going to be out of debt pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden you're starting to save at a higher rate. Mm-hmm. And have you walked that out with her to say, hey, this is what it's going to do to our monthly budget, to where you can spend more on the kids' stuff. We can go on trips, we can do things, and even save up for a house that maybe be better for a growing family. Have you walked that entire vision out for her? 
you know, would, would, well, I guess not to step by step in, in overall length, you know, in, in looking way out in the future. But I mean, she she's the one who handles who well, we do it together. But she handles the day to day money stuff for us, and we work out budgets and stuff like that together. But uh, so she knows the financial picture. I think it's just more of an emotional attachment that she has, and so so. It's, just trying to figure but out she's not. Thought, she's not so. saying. She's not putting her foot down. Going, we can't do this. Correct? No, no. And she, she's giving me the line of "I'll follow you anywhere," which of course <laughs> makes me feel bad for dragging her. Right? No, no. I like, I like that, line. I like that no. line. Yeah, I got to tell you something. I wouldn't yes. feel bad about that. Does do you believe she means it? Oh, oh gosh, yeah. Okay, we. Well, yeah. then, dude, yeah. come on, the man. Fact that she came oh, here and what? stayed here with me was it was a shock. Well, some, like that. Some some women say that, but they don't mean it. Nah, she means it. She means it. Yeah, listen. You got to uh, go wife. Yeah, listen. Um you got to do this. I don't know why I don't know why you're not doing this other than the fact that you feel bad. I think you we just got to the whole point of the call right there at the end. You feel like you're uh making her life worse and I think what you got to well you got to realize she said she's willing to follow you and you show her this bigger vision a little bit more specific than you have. And I think when when you do that, you're going to feel like, hey, I actually am doing the best thing. I am doing the right thing. This is going to pay off Ooh. down the line. But the fact that she's willing to to follow you, then lead, man. Come on. Say that again, Ken. The fact that she's willing to follow you, yes. lead, man. Lead, man. I mean, you know, you got to <laughs> put, uh, put your big boy pants on, tighten that belt. Straighten that back up and go do it, man. I'm you not- are leading your family into a fantastic financial future. That's what you got to think about. You're not ripping your family out of a nice home. So that's, that's not what's happening. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see the comments from the ladies on this one tomorrow. Oh, this is going to be so good. Yeah, all of a sudden I'm worried about what I said. I have no <laughs> idea. No, fun stuff. Hey, I, you know, look, this is a great, great call. This is a great situation, and it's relationship. This is a marriage thing, not a money thing, but it's going to have great money consequences. Good stuff there. Thank you so much, Joshua, for the call. I'm going to explain marriage to AO during the break. Don't move. More of your calls coming up. This is The Ramsey Show. show continues from our Ramsey Solutions headquarters. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by Anthony O'Neill. So thrilled to have you with us. 888-825-5225. Our scripture of the day comes from 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Our quote today from Walter Elliott, perseverance is not a long race. It is many short races, one after another. 888 825 is the number. Let's go to Tallahassee, Florida, where Kyle joins us. Kyle, how can we help? Hey, guys. Pleasure to speak to you. I love listening to you both. Thank you so much. How can we help? I got a technical question today about uh, life insurance for my grandmother. Mm -hmm. Um, So she's 77 years old, and she's on a fixed income living on Social Security. Uh, She currently has a 10K whole life policy, which she pays $30 a month for. Mm. Um, The cash value of that is about $3,000. We went and checked on uh, term insurance. And through Xander, and they said that the cheapest they have would be two hundred fifty-four dollars a month mm-hmm. for a ten-year term at fifty k, mm-hmm. and that's too much for her. At uh, what to pay per month? At, at what um? At what payout? Uh, fifty thousand payout. Fifty thousand dollars. How old is your grandmother? Yeah, that was the lowest. All right, she's seventy-seven. Okay, yeah, I can understand that because she is higher up in age, honestly. Uh-huh. Yeah, she has some uh, health issues like scoliosis, um, but overall she is in good health. Um, so my question is, sh- should she keep the whole life policy since it's just $30 a month, um, or should she take that $3,000 cash value out? And she has another 1500 she could put with it into a mutual fund investment 
all she's trying to do is cover uh, cremation costs, and then anything above that would just be gravy that goes to the family. Does she have any other savings? Uh, no, not really. Just that fifteen hundred that she would be willing to put into the brokerage account. How much is the cremation cost? Uh, we're estimating about ten thousand for the cremation and funeral services. Yeah, so really, if I'm understanding this, the only reason she's even thinking about the term life policy is to cover her funeral costs. Yes, which There's, the whole life would cover as well for a lot less per month. Yeah. A.O., what do you think on that one? You know, it's a tough one, man, uh, because she is higher up in age. Um, and, and Xander is right, because she is yeah. higher up in age with medical issues. Um, it is a little, it is a little, uh, difficult to get the quality insurance, um, at, at this point, because she's so far in, I would honestly sit down, um, uh, and look, look at the math. Okay. Now, if she can get that money raised within the next two, two to three years, um, um, then I would definitely say, go ahead and cancel the whole life and go ahead and just start stacking the savings. If there is no way possible that she can get that thing there, then um, because of where she's at, I mean, the whole life, this insurance policy, because she is in it, uh, may be an OK route. I'm not a fan of whole life insurance. I don't I don't endorse it. But because she is in the latter part, we need to figure out how do we get this the, the bare minimum taken care of. Um, and my yeah, preference I think the it would be. Oh, sorry about that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I did the math and it'd be about a, a six year break even for her to get 10 K in her brokerage account with the money that she would put in there. Does she have any kids that I can help her? I mean, clearly because I mean, but I mean, are any of her kids and anyone alive that can help her get to that 10 K? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and they're all doing fine on their own. They could cover the funeral costs, but she just wants to not put any burden on her family uh, yeah. for when, she yeah. passes. Yeah, I understand. I understand. My 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 gut is, um, I, I would honestly counsel the policy because she's yeah. wasting the money. Cash it out and yeah. invest it. Sit down with one of our smart investor pros, and let's figure out how to best invest that money. Yeah. Um. And and I think that that you know at, at her age, I mean, you're you're expecting her life expectancy. I'm guessing to 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 go a bit. I guess she's pretty healthy. Yeah, she's pretty healthy overall. I would assume she'd make it more than six years. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's what I would do. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, c contact one of our smart investor pros in your area, in the Tallahassee area, and uh, let's let's cash that out and let's put that to good use because it's not going to help her. It's, it's not going to gain anything, and it's it's. I understand that the cost is so low, but that's part of the marketing pitch for whole life. Oh, yeah. it's only thirty dollars a month. Well, it's just a complete waste of money. Right. And and so yeah, I would cash out that and let's invest that wisely. And I think that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna be the best move there. Triple eight eight two five five two two five is the number. Let's go to Phoenix, Arizona, where Tina joins us. Tina, how can we help? Hi, thanks for taking my call, guys. You bet. What's up? Um, I have kind of two problems. Um, today is my last for sure paycheck that I've received, and also um, I'm a public school teacher. And um, this year with COVID being interesting is kind of crazy, but um, I'm not getting a recommendation from my bosses to go to another school. So I'm kind of like panicking a little bit because I'm not quite sure what to do next. Why are you not getting a recommendation from your current bosses? It's personal. Um, oh, okay. I got COVID and like there was a, a cluster at my school. So. so there's been a personality and conflict. Yes. Okay, but you, uh, but, but has anything been negative in your file? Has there been anything written up that would go into your, you know, your your uh, uh, employment profile for other schools? Um, no, but it was not. We talked a little bit about that today, and some of that didn't go in because I said I was going to resign at the end of the year. So I'm just another school has asked for a recommendation, and she had said no, and now I'm like I don't know how to move forward because. My points were valid, but you can't change how somebody feels about you. And I really feel like I'm called to be a teacher. Good. Did you reach out to that? Yeah, I don't want you to feel like just because you can't get a recommendation, you can't get a job. Let's just go ahead and dispel that myth, okay? Okay. Is it going to be difficult? Might be. I don't know. But it's scarier than it actually is, is what I want you to hear. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. 
All right. Yeah. So did you reach out to the school uh, in, in the form of applying that then reached out to your current boss? Yes. And so have you had any contact with them? Yes. And what are they saying? Are they moving on from you? Well, because they, um, The assistant principal took it to the principal because they wanted me there. And now they're like, well, a past school saying yes and one the current school saying no. And so I've had to kind of explain myself. And how did that conversation go when you explained yourself? It went well. But I mean, at what point do you keep like... Uh, like trying to like this is me not what they think of me wait a second I, you know wait, wait, I, mean? wait, wait, wait. I do know what you mean but uh, the, the great news is you would have thought that they told you to go pound sand uh they wanted you they got a good recommendation from one school and and a non-recommendation or a, you know not so good from the current school and you were able to talk to them about it and you said it went well they're still thinking about it though. i get it but hey fight for it fight for it here's the other thing how many current Great recommendations could you get from other teachers or other people at your current school or other schools? And that's that's what I've said. I've reached out and I said, please talk to people who are in my classroom on a daily basis and no, just an Alyssa, observation. Don't tell them to talk to them. Go get the recommendations yourself and flood their email with it. Okay. Take the bull by the horns, Tina. So answer okay. my question. How many... In Phoenix, Arizona, how many education contacts do you have that would vouch for you that you're a really good teacher and tell a different story than the story you currently have told about you? How many? Um, too many to count. So I'd be calling all those people, getting written emails from them and forwarding to the assistant principal going, hey, I understand why you're hesitating. I get it. I'm telling you it was a personality conflict. It was a rare situation. I can do this. Here are all the people that will vouch for me that will give you a totally different narrative than what you're hearing now. And it will match up with the good narrative you got from me. Come on, Tina. You going to fight for it? Yeah. <laughs> Let's stop worrying about it and start doing something about it. This isn't going to stain you for the rest of your life. All right, Tina, you know what to do. All right. I want to thank my colleague, Anthony O'Neill. So fun to be with you on the air, my friend. I want Always. to thank our producer, James Childs, Madison Browder, sitting in today for Kelly Daniel. Thank you. And thanks to you, America. You are why we do the show. This is The Ramsey Show. Have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.